Who's in control of your solar and battery installation? Can you even trust your smart meter? Who's got access to all your data? And could they make changes or even shut down your system without your permission? And should you be worried about allowing others to control your system? That's what we're going to be talking about in this video, and there's more to this than meets the eye. Hi there, I'm Gary, and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. It's surprising the number of comments I get from viewers about allowing others to control solar and battery installations and accessing system data. The comments I get are quite polarised, in fact. Some are quite happy for customers that they trust to control their system for specific purposes, whilst others are vehemently against any kind of external control or even allowing anyone any kind of access to their own data. In this video then, we'll be looking at what it means to allow third parties access to your solar and battery setup, including the benefits and the risks. I'm sure you'll have a view on this for your own system at the moment, and I'd be interested to see if that view changes by the end of this video. Let me know in the comments. OK, let's get started. But where to start? A good place to start is with the electricity meter in your property. Years ago, these meters were relatively simple but effective devices, comprising a metal disc that through electromagnetic induction would spin at a rate directly proportional to the power flowing through it at the time. In other words, your electricity consumption. The more energy you were consuming, the faster it would spin. And every time the disc completed one revolution, it would advance the mechanical counter which displayed the total energy consumed since installation. If your property is many years old, you might still have one of these meters fitted. Now because this type of meter is not connected to the internet or anything like that, the only way your energy provider would know how much energy you're consuming is by asking you to provide manual meter readings every month or so. Your provider might also send someone round to your property to read the meter from time to time. Now one limitation of this type of meter is that your energy provider doesn't know exactly when you're using energy on a given day, so it can only charge a fixed rate per kilowatt hour. Fast forward to today though and electricity meters are far more advanced. They're called smart meters and they're described as smart for two main reasons. The first is that they're connected via the internet so that your energy provider can automatically read your energy usage. There's no longer any requirement for you to submit readings yourself or for your energy provider to send someone round. The second reason is that smart meters are able to report exactly when your property is consuming energy, typically to the nearest 30 minutes. This is quite revolutionary because it allows energy providers to offer tariffs that will not only save you money, but help the environment at the same time. A very basic example would be cheaper rates overnight, but this video details a more sophisticated example of the kinds of tariffs that can be offered with smart meters and the increased benefits you'll derive. This particular tariff comes from Octopus Energy in the UK, who I'd highly recommend. And if you switch using my referral code, we'll both get £50, which helps support my channel. Thank you. But I guess with smart meters, there's a question. Where is your energy data actually going to? Who gets to see it? Well, that depends on which part of the world you live in. In the UK, there's a centralised data repository operated by the DCC, or Data Communications Company. OK, I had to laugh at that name. It's so generic, like Acme, a company that supposedly makes everything. Maybe the DCC has aspirations to centrally manage all kinds of data across the UK. Hey, maybe even the world. OK, even I'd be worried at that prospect. Anyway, all the smart meters in the UK send their data to the DCC on at least a daily basis then the various parties, including energy providers of course, that require access to that data can do so. Now the way data is collected from smart meters varies across the world, but there is a tendency for there to be some kind of centralised exchange system, similar to the DCC. And if you already have a smart meter, then you're already part of that system. And if you're not happy with that, you can't really go back. You'd have to move to a house that doesn't have a smart meter, and that will be increasingly difficult as the rollout of smart meters in your country continues. And if you don't have a smart meter today, you're generally not compelled to get one. But without one, you're not able to derive all the benefits from the accompanying smart tariffs. And this is particularly so if you have, or you're thinking about getting an electric vehicle. To benefit from cheap overnight EV charging, you'll almost certainly be required to have a smart meter. It's worth spending a little time then to read up on whichever organisation is responsible for reading and storing your energy usage. 
in order to make a determination on whether you can trust them or not. My own view is this. Many third parties having access to a central repository will generally only be interested in aggregated data. They're unlikely to be interested in what energy you're using in particular, unless it's your energy provider who needs that to bill you. Even then, your energy usage is not going to be all that different to thousands of other people who have a house of a similar size to you. So do you really care? And if you think about it, having a solar and battery installation makes the value of that data to any prying eyes a lot less valuable still. Most days you'll be hardly importing any energy through your meter because the sun or your battery is providing it all. So anyone reading just your smart meter data wouldn't be able to gauge very much about your actual energy consumption. And if a third party like a government wanted to understand more about your life, they'd get a far better picture from your bank transactions and your mobile phone records. So I'd argue the benefits of having a smart meter far outweigh the extremely limited personal information that you might be giving up for that. Onto your solar and battery system then. Nearly all manufacturers offer solutions for accessing the data generated by your system over time and also for controlling how your system operates, for example, battery charging and discharging times. In the early days, a solar system, principally the string inverter, would typically have a control panel and screen on it. But the more favored approach these days is access and control of the system remotely via a web browser or mobile app. And beyond merely a direct connection to the system via your home Wi-Fi, an increasing number of manufacturers are now hosting management portals in the cloud that your web browser and mobile app connect to via the internet. I guess the first question to ask is, why are the manufacturers taking this approach? What are the benefits to them? And what are the benefits to you, the consumer? Let's start by looking at the benefits to the manufacturer. It starts with the manufacturer having a complete dashboard view of the status and performance of all their deployed products and services across the world. With this, they can check in real time that everything is working as it should and quickly identify any underperformance trends and make any configuration changes required to everybody's systems remotely to improve things. Remote access also allows manufacturers to routinely deploy software updates. These updates could be to fix bugs, enhance security, improve functionality and provide new features. Just like what happens today with your laptop or your mobile phone. And should any customers report an issue, the manufacturer is able to offer immediate assistance by remotely diagnosing the issue and potentially resolving it without having to send out an engineer. This not only increases customer satisfaction, but dramatically lowers operational costs. And even if faulty equipment has to be swapped out, it's now only a single engineering visit to perform the swap instead of two visits, the first just to diagnose the problem. The consumer energy market continues to evolve at a fast pace and a cloud-based portal allows manufacturers to trial new capability to a subset of customers before rolling it out to the remaining customers when it's proven. And finally, manufacturers are able to collect vast amounts of data from all their deployed products and services, including usage patterns, energy production, storage capacity, and much, much more. This kind of data is valuable not only to the manufacturer, but many other stakeholders in the energy industry including energy providers and even governments. Okay, you can see why equipment manufacturers are investing heavily in cloud-based portals, given the many benefits to them. But how does that translate to you, the consumer? And don't worry, we'll be covering the downsides soon. Well, I think the benefits translate very well to you. You're able to access your setup from your armchair, or indeed wherever you happen to be away from the home. And with whatever device you've got at the time, your mobile phone, your laptop, or a tablet, for example. And it's not just the current status of your system. The manufacturer will generally store all the data your system has generated ever since it was commissioned. And from that, you can view historical reports and charts at the touch of a button. You'll find that your system is constantly being enhanced over time, all without you having to do anything. New features and capabilities just appear before your eyes. And any issues that your system might experience are likely to be solved before you even know about them. And if you don't believe me, just look through the release notes that generally come with remote software updates. You'll be surprised just how many bugs are fixed that you were never ever aware of. And if you do experience a problem, it can be investigated remotely by customer support straight away and hopefully resolved with a software fix. And if it can't be fixed remotely, perhaps because of a faulty part, 
a replacement part can be ordered immediately, with an engineer only needing to visit your home once to swap it out. OK, let's consider the downsides now. There's no doubt about it, with all that data being captured from your system, the manufacturer has an intimate view of your daily energy usage going back years, and that data could potentially be sold on. It's one thing selling data in an aggregated and anonymized form. I personally wouldn't be too concerned about that. But would they be selling your individual data to third parties who could then use that data to derive detailed insights into your daily life? The first question then is, what will the manufacturer be doing with your data? It's certainly worth reading through their terms and conditions of service and also their privacy policy. Both of these documents you can get from the manufacturer's website. Now I know these documents can be incredibly long, boring and almost unreadable, but you can use an AI tool like ChatGPT to do the hard work for you. Just feed it the text of the document or upload it and ask questions like this one. A second question then is, do you trust the manufacturer to abide by its own policies? If you live in Europe, any company supplying goods and services to you must adhere to government legislation called General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR. And if you live outside Europe, your country is likely to have equivalent legislation. It's very powerful legislation, and it's there to protect your personal data. Companies are required to detail what data they collect about you, and more importantly, in every case, why. And if they use your data for any reason outside of that, they can be fined heavily. And I mean heavily. Fines can be a percentage of the company's global turnover, and of course the loss of reputation that would go with that negative publicity. It would take a brazen company to defy legislation like that, I feel. And so if it were me, I'd choose an equipment manufacturer that has built up a very good reputation over the years, and one that they wouldn't want to lose in a hurry. A third question might be, could your data be hacked? It's true, any data stored in the cloud has the potential to be hacked. But the chances of that happening are significantly reduced if the manufacturer has implemented proper IT security around their portal. For example, ISO 27001 certification, which is a global standard for information security management. But do you trust the manufacturer has this kind of certification? If you have any concerns about how secure your data is, you should contact the manufacturer and ask them directly what security certifications they have. Again, I'd be choosing a manufacturer that has a solid reputation that they'd hate to lose. They would know that a data breach from deficient security could kill their business overnight, and they would want to make sure their security is robust and up to industry standards. Perhaps one final question we could ask is, could the manufacturer or any other party take control of your system without your permission? I would say it's unlikely the manufacturer would do that themselves. Again, it would harm their reputation and future sales. But in some countries, the national grid operator may impose rules on manufacturers, whereby solar systems can be remotely shut down for short periods, if required, to preserve grid stability. Now, I could understand why such legislation might be needed. And if that's the case in your country, there's little you can do about it, other than not to participate or disconnect your system from the internet, which I'll cover in a moment. OK, we've covered access and control of your system by the manufacturer, but what about having your system accessed and controlled by third-party service providers? I'll give you an example. Here in the UK, I'm currently on a tracker tariff from Octopus Energy called Agile. With this tariff, the price of electricity changes every 30 minutes based on the wholesale market price. Generally, it works out that electricity is cheapest overnight and more expensive during the early evening. You can check out this video I made on the Agile Tariff if you want to find out more about how it works. What I want to do is charge my battery to 100% every night using the cheapest available energy slots. The trouble is, the times of those cheapest slots vary every day, and I really don't want to have to manually program my home battery every day. So I have elected to use a third-party service called My Energy Optimizer to do all this for me. The way the service works is that it takes full control over my home battery, charging and discharging it whenever it needs to. And for it to do that, I have to provide what is called an API key. This is a secure code I get from my system manufacturer, and it allows My Energy Optimizer to remotely access and control my system. I have to say, in the three or four months I've been using the service, it's done a great job. I've had no real issues. 
But here's the thing, giving any third party a secure code that allows them to access your system is a clear risk. They would be able to read all your data and take full control over your system if they wanted to. So the question is, do you trust them to behave and do only what they say they will do? The answer to this likely depends on who the service provider is. It might be your energy company or even the manufacturer themselves looking to add a value added service. In a sense, you already have some level of trust with these companies, otherwise you wouldn't do business with them in the first place. But what if it's a much smaller and or relatively new company? How do you make a judgment call on that? It's a tough one, and what I did with My Energy Optimizer was interview the founder, Richard Pierce, and I asked him some pretty direct questions. The video of that interview is available here for anyone who might be interested in using that same service. I was happy with all of Richard's answers, and the system works exactly as he described. Richard was also kind enough to add a new feature I requested, where users would receive regular emails stating exactly how and when the service was controlling their system and the outcomes from that. That feature provides me and I'm sure other users with additional confidence. Whatever third party services you might be thinking of using, it's always worth checking to see how others already using the service are getting on, specifically looking for any negative feedback in social media forums. And by the way, if you're signed up to any third party services and you're not happy with them, you can simply change the secret API key on the system portal. And this will immediately lock out all the third parties who currently have access using that key. The final thing I want to cover then is this. If you really don't want anyone accessing your data or controlling your system, can you disconnect your system from the internet and still be able to operate it? The answer to that depends on the manufacturer. My own system is from Give Energy, and if I turn off the internet, it's still possible to access and control the system using the mobile app, provided I'm at home. But by disconnecting it from the internet, my data is no longer being logged to the Give Energy portal, which means there's no historical data anymore. And of course, if I'm away from home, I can no longer see what's happening with my system anymore. And worse than that, I won't receive any software bug fixes or new features. And if I experience any issues with the system, I'm unlikely to get much help from the manufacturer, as they'll want to remotely investigate the issue first. And for some manufacturers, you might even invalidate your system warranty. All in all, you'll most definitely be limiting the benefits open to you. As a summary then, provided you've chosen reputable companies for your energy and system equipment, I don't think you need to worry too much about your system being controlled without your permission, or if your energy data will be misused. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and please click like if you found this video useful, and subscribe to see my future videos. By the way, I've been told you might also need to click the bell icon as well so you don't miss out on what I've got coming next. Until next time then, cheers.